I love the Lord and I won't take it back. I love the Lord and I won't take it back. I love the Lord and I won't take it back. He has been so good to me. I love the Lord and I won't take it back. I love the Lord and I won't take it back. I love the Lord and I won't take it back. He has been so good to me. So good, so good, so good. He has been so good, so good, so good. He has been so good to me. I love the Lord and I won't take it back. I love the Lord and I won't take it back. I love the Lord and I won't take it back. He has been so good to me. So good, so good, so good. He has been so good, so good. So good, he has been so good to me. Well, God bless you. Good morning, Deacon and Sister Polk. Good morning, Elder and Sister Dorset. Good morning, Sister Eleanor. God bless you, Pastor and Lady Chetram. Good morning, Deacon and Sister Shy. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Newby. Good morning, God bless you, Mika. God bless you, Sister Banks. Good morning, Grace. Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you, Sister Banks. God bless you, Tammy and Jesse. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sister McNeil. Good morning, Jessica. God bless you, Sister Matthews. Good morning, Sister McAfee. God bless you, Sister Bailey. Good morning, Sister Burnett. God bless you, Sister Smith. Good morning, Sister Parker. Good morning, Sister Dykes. God bless you. Good morning. Sister Blackwell, God bless you. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. Good morning, Brianna. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you, your family, and all the saints in Trinidad, Tobago. Good morning, Sister Bailey. Good morning, Sister Cleckley. Good morning, Katrina. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Katina. God bless you, Minister Dirk, and your family. Good morning, Carmelita. God bless you and your family. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Cleckley. Good morning, Ju Duchess. God God bless you, Brother Aaron and the family. Good morning, Sister Ford. God bless you. Good morning, Brother Wardlaw. God bless you and Sister Wardlaw. Good morning, Jim. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Bailey. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Deborah. God bless you. Good morning, Pastor and Lady Williams. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Carly. Good morning, Sister Graves. God bless you and Deacon Graves. Good morning, Sister Cheek. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. God bless you. Brother Perry and the family. Good morning, Sister Missionary Domingo. God bless you. Good morning, Bishop and Lady Alde. God bless you, your family, and all the saints of the Allegheny Diocese. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Brother Paul, praise Jesus. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Tiana. Good morning, Sister Speller. Good morning, Sister Nelson. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Johnson Walker. God bless you, Deacon Walker and the family. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you, Sister Wiggins. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sister Nash. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Butler. God bless you. Good morning, Angela. My dear sister, God bless you. Well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to bring to you a biblical meditation and prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue to witness the manifestation of the power of God and the favor of God in the lives of the people of God. You know, I was, um, I'm testifying today. Um, I've had some car issues, cars in the shop, getting cars repaired. And all of you know, that's not a cheap proposition. And so I was having one of our cars repaired and they given me an estimate, but they discovered a new problem. And typically, you know, if you know how car repairs are, you have to pay everything before you pick up your car. So I told them I'm going to take care of this and I'll come back in two weeks and do the other um, part of the job. 
And the mechanic said to me, um, Mr. Davis, I tell you what I want you to do. Pay me what the estimate is. Um, we're going to go ahead and fix it so it's fixed right. And then you can come back in about two weeks and pay that off. And I was just thanking God because mechanics don't do that anymore. They make you pay everything and they keep your car and they add interest and they add storage fees and everything else if you can't pick that car up right away. So I thank God for unexpected favor, God opening doors, God making ways and God blessing because that's what what he does. He takes care of the needs of his people. Saints, don't ever believe that God will not take care of you. He'll take care of you. He'll provide. He'll open doors and he will indeed make ways. As always, if you have a prayer request, we want you to share it with us. If you're on Facebook, you can place it right into the chat or you can inbox Reginald Davis or you can inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you're on Instagram, you can um, place it right into the chat or you can direct message Pastor RJD. And to everybody that is on the conference call, and we thank God for our conference call listeners, to everybody that's on YouTube or anybody, if you have a prayer request, you can text it to 336-567-5358. Again, that number is 336-567-5358. We're adding them to the prayer list. We're praying over them, and we are joining our faith to your faith in the expectation that God is going to touch, deliver, save, make whole, and do everything that we know he is able to do. I want you to join me back in the book of Psalms, Psalm number 78, and today I want to read verses 30 through 39. Psalm number 78. Verses 30 through 39. They were not estranged from their lust, but while their meat was in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them, and smote down the chosen men of Israel. For all this they sinned still and believed not for his wondrous works. Therefore their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble. When he slew them, then they sought him, and they returned and inquired early after God. And they remembered that God was their rock and the high God their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. Cometh not again. I want to use for a thought this morning, is my heart right? Is my heart right? You know, man is a tripart being. He is body, he is soul, and he is spirit. And the internal man determines so much concerning the actions and the behaviors and the attitude and the activities of the outward man. Now, we can't see the inward man. And unless we are gifted with discernment or given spiritual insight, we really don't know what's in a person's heart. And, and sometimes we see things that people do and we see things that, or we hear things that they say or we witness their habits and their behaviors and their dispositions and their attitudes. and we're trying to figure out what they're doing. We're trying to figure out why they're doing whatever it is that they're doing. That's why we talked about motivation yesterday. And the bottom line is with a lot of people, even as much as they articulate good intentions, even as much as they articulate their love for God and their love for the people of God and their love for the work of God, in so many cases, 
we are dealing with people whose hearts are not right. Their hearts aren't right. We're looking at behaviors that are mystifying us because they've got titles and they've got um, positions in the church and they have testified of their love for God and their love for the people of God, but their behaviors don't seem to reflect it. And we're trying to figure out why. Why does somebody that claims they love God um, deal with whatever? Why does somebody that claims that they care for God um, behave in such an outlandish or an ungodly way? Why does somebody who says they love God mistreat their spouse? Why does somebody that says they love God mistreat their children, mistreat their parents? And it comes down to the question, is their heart right? Because if the heart is not right, guess what? The behaviors are going to eventually catch up with the heart. Absolutely. If the heart is not right, if the heart is not in the right mind, if the heart is not in the right shape, trust and believe that eventually the behaviors, the attitudes, the actions are going to be manifested. That's why the Bible says the tree is known by the fruit it bears. Let me say that again. The tree is known by the fruit it bears because that tree, hallelujah, says it's an apple tree. You don't know it's an apple tree until you see apples. Now, my grandfather was a farmer and he could look at the leaves and not see the fruit and say, that's an apple tree. That's a pear tree. That's a peach tree. But most of us have to wait for the fruit to be manifested. And you don't know what it is until the fruit is manifested. And people don't know who you are, what you are, what you are about until the fruit of your life is manifested. That's why there's a fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, hallelujah, long suffering, meekness, temperance, all of this fruit of the spirit, the manifestation of the spirit. And what we're seeing in so many cases is the manifestation, hallelujah, of the heart. Now, I'm going to tell you this because you'll say to me, Bishop, I know my heart is right. And I would say to you, check again. Hallelujah. Yeah, you'll say, Bishop, I know my heart is right. And I'm going to say to you, check again. I can say my heart is right, but I've got to tell myself, check again. Why? Because the brighter in the scripture says that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Your own heart will deceive you. Yes, it will. Your own heart will deceive you about what's in your heart. You run around thinking that you love everybody and you're nice to everybody and let the right person that you have an unresolved issue walk up and your whole demeanor changes, your whole attitude changes, your disposition changes. Why? Because your heart has deceived you. Your heart told you you didn't have any issues. Your heart told you you didn't have any problems. Your heart told you that you were in love with everybody until that person with whom you have something unresolved shows up. And then your heart, hallelujah, reveals itself. And you, you said, Lord, I didn't know I felt this way. I didn't know I was feeling like this. Because you know what? Your heart, your heart, your heart. Hallelujah, your heart. And that's why we have to be in constant examination of our own hearts, constant examination of our own spirit, constant examination about what is truly motivating us and what is pushing us. Because some of us, like I said yesterday, are being pushed by our lust and not our love for God. We're being pushed by what we can get out of God, what we can take from God, what we can get from him. That's what's pushing us, not Hallelujah, the fact that I love God. Because if you love God, there's going to be a difference in how you manage all of the things that life brings. And yes, life brings a lot. Let me just be honest. Life brings a lot. And once again, you have to be careful that you don't allow what's happening, that you don't allow your heart to mislead you into behaviors and actions and words that are displeasing to God. And so the Bible says, going back to verse 30, they were not estranged from their lust. In other words, they were tied to their lust and their lust was causing them to crave stuff rather than God. And even when God was blessing them, that craving, deceitful, lustful heart 
was angry with God. God making a way. God doing everything that he could to provide for them. God giving them manna. God giving them water. And I'm not just talking about 10 or 20 people. We're talking about over 2 million people. God is feeding and God is helping. But yet because of their greed, because of their avarice, they were never satisfied and they were always complaining. They're sitting around freed from slavery. They've seen God bring them through the Red Sea. He's taking them through the wilderness and they're actually sitting there saying, we wish we were back in Egypt because they had melons and fish and leeks and onions and garlic. They, they, I mean, think about the insanity of this phrase that you're freed from slavery and you're wishing you were back in slavery so that you could have some fish and some onions and some leeks and some garlic. Hallelujah. That's the deceitfulness of the heart that God can be blessing you, but your heart won't let you be satisfied. God can be helping you, but your heart won't let you rejoice in what God is doing. Instead, you're fixated on what you don't have. And you're fixated on what's not working when you ought to be thanking God for what he's doing, my God, in your life. And so the wrath of God comes upon them and God smites them. But yet, the, look at this, for all this, they sinned still. They continue to sin. God would judge them. God would punish them. But because of that heart, they continued in their sin and they continued to refuse to believe. Therefore, their days he did consume in vanity and their years in trouble. What was supposed to be a 40 day journey became a 40 year journey because of the murmuring, the complaining, and the deceitful heart of Israel. And when he slew them, look at this, because this was the pattern. When he slew them, then they sought him. Yes, God would step in. The Bible says in one day he killed 24,000 and the rest of them repented. When they saw judgment fall on Korah, then the rest of them repented. And notice what the Bible says in verse 36. Nevertheless, did they flatter him with their mouth and then lied unto him with their tongues. Now, this is, this. think about this now. Uh, the Bible talks about the tongue and that a bitter hollow well can't produce sweet water. So they were trying to utter sweet praise to God, flattering God, glorifying God, but with that same mouth they lied unto him because they committed to repentance. And repentance is not just saying, I'm sorry because I got caught. Repentance is also the capacity to look to God to forsake the sin. When somebody is truly repentant, they forsake their sin. They walk away from their sin. They turn their heart and their spirit away from their sin. But you can tell when people have not repented because they keep falling back. They keep going back. And some of it is them not believing that the grace of God is able to deliver them. If you're going to repent of a sin, if you're going to repent of an activity, you have to be able to say, Lord, help me to forsake it and to move on. Hallelujah. We think repentance is all about the crying and the weeping and the emotional outburst. No, repentance is a change of mind that translates into a change of action. When God changes your mind about you, your sin, when God changes your mind about your transgression, when God changes your mind about your activity, then what happens is I change my actions because I want to please God. I want God to be pleased with me. I want God to honor what I do. So Lord, just don't let me, hallelujah, change my emotions. Lord, let me change my mind. Let me change how I think about this so that I can do this in a godly fashion. Verse 37, for their heart was not right with him. Their heart was not right. That's why they could praise with their mouth and lie with that same mouth. That's why they could rejoice and dance and sing. That's why they could do all of this stuff. Hallelujah. But yet, nevertheless, not be right with God. Why? Because the heart was not right. And the question that the Holy Spirit would have us ask ourselves this morning, is my heart right? I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm doing. But is my heart right? Hallelujah. Is my heart right? Or am I simply deceiving my own self? And this is important because the worst deception is self-deception. 
When you believe yourself to be in one place, but you're really somewhere else. That's self-deception. That's the deceiving of your own self. When you think that you're doing what's right. That's why, yes, absolutely. David said, Lord, search me. Know me, try me, and know what is in my heart. But more importantly, show me what's in my heart. Don't let me run around deceiving myself. Don't let me run around. The Bible says that's why we are doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving our own selves. When you just hear the word and you say amen and you say glory, hallelujah, and you thank God, but you don't take that word and examine yourself, you will deceive your own self. You will get angry and judge others the people when you yourself are in sin. You will get angry and malign and talk about and gossip about the behaviors of others when your behavior is just as bad in the sight of God. Why? Because your heart is not right. But when you say, Lord, search me, Ashatama, search me, know me, try me, my God, God has the opportunity to reveal to you what is in your heart. And when God reveals it to you, you can go to the cross, you can go to the altar, and the blood of Jesus is there to wash, to cleanse, to sanctify, to make us right. Saints, I want all of us, starting with me, to have a clean heart. I want all of us, starting with me, to have a clean spirit. I want all of us, starting with me, to be right. Right in the sight of God. Because if your heart's not right, trust me, the rest of you is going to follow. So Lord, search my heart. Search my heart. Search my heart. Try my heart. Know what is in my spirit. Hallelujah. And Lord, forgive me and restore me. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank God for the word and thank God for each of you. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. My gracious God, I love you. I thank you for your grace, your love, your kindness. I thank you because you continue to show your favor to us. Lord, you have been better to each of us than we could be to ourselves. You have awakened us this morning. You kept us last night. Lord, we slept and you kept us and you awakened us this morning in our right minds. We were able to get out of the bed. We were able to get up and get prepared to join this great cadre of believers, God, from all over the world. Lord, I thank you for the morning prayer family. And whether we have come by Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or the conference call, Lord, I thank you for everybody that is in this virtual prayer room. And I'm asking you, God, to flood this prayer room, my God, with your presence and your glory, because we need you. We need you, God. We need your help. We need your strength. We need your grace because you continue to supply the needs of people. And God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Ashiatama. Oh God, for everything you've done. Thank you, God. And I'm thanking you right now for the release of unexpected favor. Lord, right now, while we're in the midst, you're touching, you're healing, you're delivering, you're strengthening people. And God, I thank you for what you're doing. I'm praying, my God, for everybody on this prayer line. And I want you to bless everybody on this prayer line. I want you to touch everybody on this prayer line. I want you to move upon the heart of the people today. Oh God, remember every request that's been placed in the message, in the chat, in email or text message. And God, I want you to honor the request today in the name of Jesus. Remember my God, the Lunsfords this morning. Remember Michelle. Remember Justin Edwards. Remember Lisa Mays today. Remember Cynthia Barnes and family. Remember Louise. Remember Mr. Paul. Remember Bruce and family. Donna and family. God, I'm praying for the homeless today. I'm praying for the refugees, my God, in Gaza. I'm praying for the refugees. I'm praying for the families of those who lost loved ones in Israel today. I'm praying for the oppressed. I'm praying for Tyler, for Adam. I'm praying for King. I'm praying for Elder Bryce, Senior, and family. I'm praying, my God, for Kim Wright. I'm praying for Joan, for Michelle, for Chris. I'm praying, my God, for Crystal McAfferty. I'm praying for Shirley Jenkins and family, for Keisha Blunt, for Shannon Blunt. I'm praying for Robert 
Robert Shepard, for Carol Blunt today, for Cheryl Lewis and family, for David and David and Caden Bobbin today, for Claudius Joseph this morning. I'm praying for the Nash family. I'm praying for Devin Moore. I'm praying for Brianna. I'm praying, my God, for First Lady, hallelujah, Atkins and family. I'm praying for Mother Holman's neighbors. I'm praying for Pastor Christina Staten today. I'm praying for Daisy Barnes. I'm pa praying for Pastor Trey Staten. I'm praying for Pastor, oh God, Keltis Palmer. Lady Palmer and the family, God. I'm praying for Stacy and Trayvon this morning. Every name on the prayer list, God, we're holding them up in the mighty name of Jesus. And we're believing that you are able to touch and to heal and to save and to deliver. God, stretch out your hand of healing right now. Stretch out your hand, God, to touch. Stretch out your hand to deliver because we know that you're able. God, move upon the hearts and the minds of the people today in the name of Jesus Christ. And remember every need. God, we're praying today that you would look upon Hallelujah, that you would look on Ebony and DJ. God, remember Cece and her sons. Remember Adrian. Remember Mother Ava Gardner today. Remember Tammy. Remember Kenneth Perry. Remember the Edwards family, the Myers family, the Butler family. Remember Carl Dixon today. Remember Jennifer McCarroll Johnson and Irvin Johnson this morning. Remember the Adams family. Remember Lori Boone. Remember Mother, hallelujah, Barbara Pittman today. Remember Sheila Reed. Remember Dee Dee Bradley. Remember Elder and Sister Dorset. Remember Nicole Swearinger. Remember Destiny, Caleb, and Autumn today. Lord, everybody on the prayer list, God, remember them. Every unspoken request, God, we're praying for them now. We're praying for the sick today everywhere, everywhere, God. Somebody is suffering in their body, but we're praying that you would touch God in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for Cornelia Vernell, McCall's nephew, God. I'm praying for Robin's uncle. I'm praying for Jay Sean Armstrong. I'm praying for Sharon Fisher this morning, for Camelia Madison. I'm praying, my God, for the three children that were shot on Sunday. I'm praying for Carl. I'm praying for Carolyn Everett. I'm praying for Wendy Wagner today. I'm praying for Francine Stewart, for David Mott. I'm praying, my God, for Regine Moore. I'm praying for Reverend Williams' eyes today. I'm praying, my God, for Charles Smith. I'm praying for Jamila Wade. I'm praying for Smokey Dempsey today. I'm praying for Derek. I'm praying for Linda Barnes, for Marie, for Isabel. I'm praying for Dolores Pollard's sister today, Jeanette Johnson, Mickey Watson. I'm praying for Kenneth Jones and Stephen Jones and Cheyenne Moy. I'm praying for Nia this morning. I'm praying for Sister Crowder and Kyanne and Kylan. I'm praying for Lady Simone Williams today. I'm praying, my God, for Sister Jennifer McCarroll Johnson. I'm praying for Jennifer Bell today. I'm praying for the Rollins family. I'm praying for Janae McNeely today. I'm praying for Doris Jones, for Patricia Howell, for Gabriel. Everybody that's sick everywhere, God, remember them now. Remember Minister Perkins. Remember Daniel. Remember Deacon Adams. Remember Deacon Wilson. Remember Deacon and Sister Harrison. Remember Elder Tall and Elder Dokes today. My God, remember Phil this morning. Remember my God, Mother, oh God, do boast today. God, remember Mother Williams today. Remember Mother Perry. Remember everybody that's sick, God, touch them. God, I pray for missionary Janet Davis, missionary Joyce Domingo, missionary Gail Hardy. I pray today for missionary Brisbane, missionary Roseman, Sister Denise McLean, God. Lord, touch in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember my God, Mother Wilson and Brother Carl. Remember Deacon Grant today in the name of Jesus. Remember Pastor and Lady Winston. Remember my God, Bishop and Mother D. Remember Mother Hicks and Mother Owens today. Remember my God, Apostle Keith. I pray today for Bishop Early Dillard, Bishop Alfonso Brooks, Mother Shirley Clark, Mother Evangeline Jenkins, Lady Andrea Maxwell. I pray for Mother Coleman today. I pray, my God, that you remember in the name of Jesus. Oh God, Sister Pope this morning. Remember, my God, hallelujah, all of the bishops that are ill today. Remember, my God, Bishop Richard Phillips, Bishop Richard Johnson, Bishop Stephen Harper, Bishop Larry Arnold, Bishop William Jenkins, Bishop David Smith, Bishop Irving Taylor, Bishop Gregory Wilder, Bishop 
Cornell Williams, Bishop Alvin Palmer, Bishop Albert Norwood. Remember Apostle Herbert Edwards, Apostle Leroy Joseph, Apostle Charles Williams today. Remember my God, Apostle Sylvester Norwood. I'm praying today for Brother Wiggins. I'm praying for Brother and Mother Sherrod. I'm praying for Mother Garland today. Dr. Hayward, Sister Hayward, Dr. Hayward's mother. I'm praying today that you would remember in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Oh God, Mother Jill, Mother Pride. Remember my God, Mother Chambers. Remember Mother, hallelujah, Carter today. Mother Moorhead, Lady Staten. Lord, I'm praying today that you look on my God, Pastor Carr, Minister Carr. That you look on Elder Tyson, Elder Smith. Lord, I'm praying today my God for Mother Foster Henry J, Brother Cliff, for Mother Home and Mother Tanaj, Missionary Simmons, for Cynthia Catherine and Duchess today. Lord, I'm praying my God for Marlette. I'm praying for Maurice. Oh God, touch him in the name of Jesus. I'm praying my God that you remember my God. Remember Cynthia Bazin today. Remember Dennis. Remember Tony. Remember Kimberly today. Lord, everybody in every hospital, nursing home, rehab center, hospice center, God. Lord, be the healer that we know you are. God, I'm praying today for grieving families everywhere. God, remember the Glover and the Dozier family today. God, remember my God, Helen Webb. Remember Deborah Walker today. Remember the Barr family. Remember, oh God, Lady Wilder and the Wilder Dempsey family. God, I pray for the Mintz family. I pray for Bishop and Mother Valia today. I pray, God, for the McClendon Pulley family. I pray for the Garland family this morning. God, remember my God, Kelly Gardner. Remember my God, the Harper family, the Cranford family, the Francis family. Remember Deborah Jones. Remember my God, Lady Easley and the family, the Carter family. Remember Rita. Remember Demoria Owens Walker. Remember Lindsay and the Hicks family. Remember Thelma Williams. Remember the Atkins family, God. Remember my God, Sandra Kennedy today. Remember the way of the cross church. Remember the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, remember grieving people everywhere. God, I'm praying today that you would remember, oh God, and remember and look on Mother Walker and Mother Moya and their family. Jalisa and Jackie and Takesha and Phoenicia and Jerry, oh God, and their families. God, remember in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember Lady Maxwell, Charles and Cedric and the family. Remember my God, Dr. Carter and the family. Apostle Phil Shekinah and the family. Remember Mother Harrell and her family. Remember Mother Grant and her family. God, look on the Groove of family, the Hargrove family, the Kramer family, the Blunt family. God, remember my God, the Bonhams, the Tabors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family. Look on the Meadows family, the Moyer family, the Perkins family. I pray for the Dockery family. Sister Pam, her mom and her sisters. God, I pray today that you remember my God, Anita and the Brian Hopkins family. Margie and the McLean, Melvin, and Street families. Remember the Ransom family, the Jackson family, the Ned family, the Newkirk family, the Green family, the Nunn family, the Umstead family. God, remember them in a special way. Remember Lady Otis and her family today. Remember Brenda and the Alan McNeely family. Shorty Monique and the Gary Porter family. Trell and Ryan and the Alan Williams family. God, look on Tommy and Michelle and the Clark family. The Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdies, the Sneeds, the Washington Fields family. The Winninghams, the Bankses, the Middletons, the Taylors. Look on the Felix family, the Sapata family, the Mannix, the Boudrums, the Gleans, the Arthurs, the Matherins, the Briggs family, the Taylors, the Josephs, God, the Phillips family. Look on the Davises today, the Allens, the Caldwells, the Hayses, the Moors, the Austins, the Harbisons, the Adams, the Austin family. Every grieving widow, every grieving widower, every child, parent, sibling, loved one, God, look on them today. Touch them in the name of Jesus. Strengthen them and have your way in their lives. God, give them grace and comfort. Lord, remember the body of Christ today. Every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, every first lady, all the pastor's children, mothers and missionaries, ministers and deacons, all of the young people in the church, God. Remember musicians, singers, and psalmists. Lord, make our hearts right. Make our hearts right. God, make our hearts right. Help us, oh God, examine our hearts. Lord, show us to ourselves that we might repent and confess and forsake our sin. Lord, that you might get the glory, my God, out of our lives. I pray for first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs. I pray, my God, that you remember, oh God, school employees and students everywhere. Remember Northern High School. Remember Lowe's Grove. Remember Carrington, God. Lord, God, cover and protect, oh God, and make successful in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for everybody that works, that you would bless and keep them on their jobs. I pray for everybody 
everybody that needs a job. God, that you would open up heaven for them, that you would make provision in the and create opportunities in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray today, oh God, for the trouble all over the world, for Israel, the Ukraine, for Gaza, for Africa, for Asia, for the Caribbean, for the United States. My God, the entire world, God is in trouble. But Lord, we're trusting you, God, to heal the land. Heal the land from sin. Heal the land from jealousy, from hatred, from violence. Heal the land from injustice. Heal the land from racism and sexism. And let your church be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. God, we need you. Help us to love you the way you require us to love you. Bless us today and keep us. And we will give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on and give God praise right now. Everybody on this line, come on and give God the glory right now. Hallelujah. Give God the glory right now. Hallelujah. Give God the glory right now. This is my declaration for today. Lord, forgive me and restore me. All of us can afford to examine ourselves. All of us will find something that we need to work on. If it's nothing more than an attitude, hallelujah. It's not always sin. The Bible says lay aside, hallelujah, every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. So it's not always sin, but sometimes there are just weights. Bad attitudes, bad thoughts, bad mindsets, bad dispositions, hallelujah, that get in our way. But Lord, I want you to examine me and I want you to forgive me. Hallelujah. Search me, Lord. Shine the light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and straighten me. I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. God bless you today. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your morning is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connect connected to Refuge Temple all day today. Hallelujah. This um, prayer is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Thank God for those that join us by conference call. Keep coming. Keep sharing the number and stay with us in the name of Jesus. You can also stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, and Spotify. All of this available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I want to thank everybody that sees and sows and shares with this ministry. Your gifts help us to do the things that we need to do, and we thank God for you, and we thank God for the gift. And Refuge Temple is good ground. And you can sow a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can also give online. Our website is www.refugetemple, N is in North, C is in Carolina.com. And you can give on the donate page. You can also give through the Givelify app. Just simply search for Refuge Temple Burlington. You'll see a picture of the church and you can make your gift there. Or if you have Cash App, our Cash App is dollar sign, the number one refuge. Dollar sign, one refuge is our Cash App and you can make your gift there. You'll see a picture of the church in our Cash App. And we thank you for your giving, but we thank you most of all, most of all for being a part of this morning prayer family. And God is blessing people all over the world because we pray together each day. So thank God for each of you and please keep coming and please keep praying. And as you pray, pray for me, pray for Lady Davis, pray for our children, pray for my father, pray for my sisters, pray for my in-laws, our nieces, our nephews, our entire family. Hold us up in prayer. Pray for Refuge Temple that God will continue to bless and keep us. And let's pray one for another that the grace of God, hallelujah, might sustain us each and every day. The Lord bless each of us to see our own hearts. The Lord bless each of us to see our own hearts. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom, shalom. <clears throat>